3D printing is one of those industries that really has fitted FPV like a glove. Being able to design and print our own brackets allows us to not only customize our aircraft, but improve them and get the best possible performance. Now, a few weeks ago, Creality reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in checking out a few of their printers. And today, we're going to be taking a look at one of them. Traditionally, in FPV, we would use what is known as an FDM filament printer, and that has allowed us to print things such as standoffs, brackets for our antennas, and really just be able to design whatever we need. Today, though, we're going to be taking a look at a resin printer from Creality called the Hallett One Plus. Whilst resin hasn't been traditionally used for FPV, things have really moved on quite a long way with resin, and today we even have the option of flexible resin, and we'll actually take a look at that in today's video. In this one, we're going to take a closer look at the actual Creality Hallett One Plus printer first of all, I'll walk you through some of its features and capabilities, I'm then going to share with you some of my own prints, experiences, and then I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now, just to be clear, Creality have sent me this printer for free, however, they have had no influence in the actual direction of this content, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own, my experiences are my own, and what I share with you is how I feel about the product. Anyway, let's get on with it, let's take a look at the printer first of all, and then get into seeing what it can do. The Hallett One Plus is a off-the-shelf resin printer from Creality. It is pretty much fully assembled. When you receive it, you simply remove the packaging, level the build plate, add resin, and it is ready to go. It features a 5-inch full-colour touchscreen, built-in Wi-Fi functionality, and it allows you to control all of this via the built-in Creality software. Prints can be uploaded to the printer via Wi-Fi, but you also have two USB ports on the front as well. The printer has a build volume of 172 times 102 times 160 millimeter or 7.9 inches. Its resin vat is secured with two screws, one in each corner, and it can hold up to a maximum of 650 milliliters. It's easily removed by simply undoing the screws and lifting the vat from the printer. The printer features Creality's 4K independently developed integral light source. It has an intensity of 4500 UW centimeters squared and has a resolution of 4320 times 2560. The printer comes fully assembled and has a quick release build plate. To remove, you simply undo the large screw on the top and then remove the build plate towards the front, allowing for quick and simple print removal and cleaning. Another nice feature is this printer has a built-in filter. This helps keep the fumes from the resins to a minimum. Around the back, you'll find a traditional three-pin power socket with the switch and fuse located above, and then on each side, you'll find some cooling vents. Getting up and running with the Hallett One Plus is very simple. Out the box, the only thing you really need to do is make sure you calibrate the build plate and upgrade the firmware. Once that's done, to get printing, you simply pour some resin into the vat, choose your print from either one of the options online on Creality, or choose it from your own selection and transfer it via USB or Wi-Fi, tell the printer to start, and wait for it to finish. Once the print started, you will see the build plate come down and you can then simply let it do its thing. Resin printing is different from the type of printing most people are used to doing, which is FDM. Rather than you having that filament coming in, you simply have the build plate moving up and down as it's actually using the light source to cure the resin and create your print. Once the prints are complete, it's then time for cleaning and curing. Now, Creality have a nice simple solution for this as well, called the UW01. It's sort of an all-in-one cleaning and curing station for your 3D prints. It has a nice large tub that you can fill up with IPA, and it acts as a bit of a washing machine, getting all of that excess resin off. And then, once that's done, you can simply remove that, put on this nice mirrored table, and then you can cure your prints via the built-in UV LEDs. Now, I'm going to be taking a look at this device separately in a future video, but what I will say is it makes a nice addition to the printer and it just makes resin printing, the whole process of that, a little bit easier and simple, allowing you to do your prints, wash them and cure them quickly and easily. Just to walk you through some of the features and menu options on this printer. Now on the home screen, you can see we have a print button and a settings, and in the corner up here, you'll see it shows us the Wi-Fi as well as our online access. If I click on print here, it will allow us to either select a print that we've previously done, and that would be shown here if I had one, or 
we can download a print from the Creality online model system. So again, because I've got the printer connected to Wi-Fi, there is a selection of test prints or other prints on here. You can see the Minion that I actually used to do my initial test print is listed. So if I wanted this, I would simply click on it, allow it to download, and we could actually then print straight from the cloud onto the printer without having to send a file to it at all. Once that's downloaded, it will then give you the option of choosing the file parameters or printing from the printer parameters itself allowing you then to go from there. So for instance, if we click printer parameters and then we can click start, choose some individual settings if we want to adjust all of the settings for the printer, such as the exposures and the delays and all of the usual options for resin printing. However, we're not going to do that right now. Clicking on the settings screen will bring up the main settings for the printer. So we have the option for cleaning, update the firmware, the Wi-Fi functionality, the details of the printer, the print settings and other settings. So for instance, if we click on other settings, first of all, we have our language and region. We have our custom skin settings. So clicking on this, it allows us to change the skin of the printer. So for instance, if I change it to colorful, click OK, you'll see that the overall skin of the printer will now change. And again, you can change the theme on this depending on what style you want. Above the other settings, we then have our print settings here, allowing us to change the print parameters, do an axis movement so we can move the Z axis up or settings on our camera monitor. Now, this printer doesn't have a camera built in as standard. However, you can connect a camera via USB and then use that as part of the Creality system to be able to monitor the printer as well. And you can actually do this via the Creality app. And I'll show that a little bit more later on. Next, we have our Wi-Fi options, allowing us to configure the onboard Wi-Fi adapter and then allow us to connect to that Creality system. But doing this also means that you can print wirelessly from a PC connected to the same network as well. Under details, it will simply give us information about binding to the Creality Cloud. You do this as part of the setup when you are using it with that Creality software, or you then have the other information screen, which gives us information such as the firmware version, serial number, and our IP address. We then have the update option. This allows us to do a update of the onboard firmware. So we got local update, allowing you to do it via USB, or you got the network upgrade, allowing you to have a look if there's new firmware available online. And if there is, you can download it directly to the printer and perform the update without any external connections at all. The final option here is cleaning. Now this allows you to actually do a full UV slice across the bottom of the trough, basically creating a full single sheet of resin, allowing you to then simply peel that off the bottom, getting the trough as clean as you can. Obviously you should always try to clean the trough via IPA, but if you do have something that is stuck to the bottom, you can do this full cleaning process and that hopefully then will embed anything that is stuck to the sheet to that sheet that you've just printed, and then you can easily peel it off. Now, before getting the Halot Plus, I didn't have a lot of experience in resin printing. However, I have to say, this printer has made my journey into resin as easy as it possibly could have been. The printer comes pretty much completely set up and ready to go. You simply just need to remove the packaging, and the only thing you really need to do is level the build plate, and Creality have a nice, easy video showing you how to do that. Once that's done, I simply connected it to my Wi-Fi, upgraded the firmware, and then it was simply a case of installing the software on my PC for the slicer transferring the file and getting the prints up and running. Now, the reality is there are many different programs out there that allow you to do the slicing, but Creality do include one as standard called Halot Box, allowing you to slice your prints and then transfer them to the printer via Wi-Fi. And it just makes the whole process of printing as simple as it possibly can be. And it's a really nice setup that Creality have with their printers that they have their software as well. And whilst it may not have every functionality you may have ever wanted, it has everything covered. And if you do find yourself wanting some more advanced features in the future, you can then take a look at some of the others. Since starting printing with the Halot Plus, I haven't actually had one fail. My first print was a test one from the Creality web store. That was a Minion. That came out absolutely fine. I then moved on to a couple of other little toys for my kids, like a little aeroplane, and then started having a look at more FPV-related prints, such as stick ends. And now 
now moving on to some more advanced stuff such as flexible resins and starting to print some parts for the back of quads, antenna holders and GPS mounts, things like that. Again, everything I have asked this printer to do so far, it has simply done. I haven't had an issue, I haven't had a problem, it's simply been a case of slice the file, transfer it to the printer, make sure I'm following the basic rules of the resin and it's come out absolutely perfect. Now just to show you some of the results that I've had from this printer, I started off with this, the resin that I was sent from Creality, it's a basic white resin, I did a few prints in that and we'll take a look at them in a moment. I then moved on to this ABS-like resin from El Goo, this is a black or smoke black resin and we'll take a look at some of the results of that, again absolutely fine. And then finally I moved on to this F69 flexible resin from Resi 1. Now this resin is a bit more complex to use, there is very much different settings for this than you would have for normal resins, but as long as you follow the instructions, again I've done four prints and they've all come out absolutely fine. Just to show you some of the results that I've had from this printer, now the first one as I've said was the Minion. Now this was a test print downloaded from the Creality system and overall I think it's come out really well. I don't think there's a massive amount of detail in the model itself, it's quite large, it's also very heavy because it's absolutely solid too, but overall for my first print I looked at it and thought that's brilliant, no problems at all. I then moved on to this and this was just a little plane that I downloaded off Thingiverse for my boy just as a test print and the one thing that that was really noticeable for me when I first seen it is just how sharp all of the edges are. Everything is just super detailed. You can see on each wing there's these little lines into the model as well. We've got the lines on each of the back wings, you've got these little blades sticking up here and then if I flip it over you can see the little missiles on the bottom and just the overall quality of the print is extremely good. I then wanted to do some more FPV related stuff and I downloaded these sticky gimbal ends from Thingiverse and printed these and again they have come out absolutely perfect. You can see the little spikes all the way around, the detail is fantastic, printed them with three mil holes and threads in the middle and again it just worked. We moved over then to the ABS-like resin from El Goo, that's this stuff here, and I did a couple more of those sticky end prints in that, this time in black, again first prints, these were out of it, come out absolutely perfect, and then I did a couple of test prints of these which are Rotoria inspired gimbal protectors for the T16S. Now again not my design taken from Thingiverse but they've come out really really well and they have this sort of metal design on the top of them on the surface like a machined metal look to them and just the detail in the print is brilliant. Once I was done on them I moved over to the F69 flexible resin. Now this stuff as I understand it can be more difficult, you need to use different settings which I dialed in off the Resi 1 website and then I made sure I followed the temperature requirements making sure the room was quite warm, about 25 degrees and again the prints have just come out perfect. Did a few more of these gimbal stick ends, this time because this is that flexible resin, so you can see I can squeeze it there. It's not a super soft resin this, it's more like a harder rubber, you can squeeze them, but they're not super soft to touch, but if you print it on something like this, this antenna mount for the back of a diatone frame, it really is a bit like TPU, it's flexible, you can squeeze it, you can move it, but it's also quite rigid as well. I'd probably beef up the design on this if I wanted it super hard, so you can print some TPU style stuff too. I have actually printed this in flexible TPU and it is as soft as this anyway when using that, but it just shows that you can use resin for flexible prints but you get that fantastic detail that you simply can't get from a traditional printer. Now as I mentioned earlier this really was my first experience with resin printing and overall it's really been straightforward. I did a little bit of pre-learning online, just a couple of videos, a bit of watching and then simply followed the instructions that Creality provided. Now yes 
resin is very much a different animal compared to FDM. There are some things you need to be aware of. The overall process is a bit more lengthy in the sense of you've got the prints, you've then got to clean the prints, you've then got to cure the prints, and then there is the cleaning of the printer and all of the stuff around it too. And then you've got the resin side of things with regards to the smell and actually using it. I'll be honest, it wasn't as bad as I thought. The printer itself has that built-in filter that really does help. However, Personally, I haven't found the smell of the resin particularly difficult to use. I have used it in here, my workshop, and whilst, yes, there's an aroma, as long as I've kept everything in check, it's been absolutely fine. What the real super interesting thing for me is about resin is just the detail and capability that you have from the printer. If you're just banging out basic prints, then FDM filament printer will probably be fine. But if you do want to start doing some more detailed stuff and you want to start being able to do things like those stick ends and stuff, resin really is the way to go. And then you have the options of things like that F69 flexible resin that has allowed for things like this. And again, it's just amazing the results that you can get. I have to say, from a quality point of view, this printer has been fantastic. It has not put a foot wrong. It has been one of the easiest experiences I have had in 3D printing. I have been printing for a very long time and whilst I have a printer now that has been working very well in the past, I have had all sorts of problems with printers, yet this from Creality opened the box, did the calibration, told it to print and it just worked. So if you are someone that wants to get into resin printing and start having a look at some stuff, I'll be honest, it is well worth a look. Now, I am also going to be having a look at some other things from Creality as well. We have an ender to take a look at that we need to build, put together, and I'm going to share with you my experiences on that as well. We're going to take a look at that UW01 in a future video, which is that cleaning station for this as well. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. That way you'll get updates when they're released. Personally, I think this is a very, very good printer simply because of the way it's worked, the way it's done everything I've asked it to do, and it has not given me any problems. And I personally see no reason it would give me any in the future. So regardless of the fact that Creality have sent this to me for free, I think right now, if you're looking to get into resin printing, you really should check out the Hallett One Plus. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe please do make sure you are a subscriber. If you'd like to make sure we continue to make content like this, please do check out the links in the description to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Creality as well for sending this over. Lots more to do, lots more trials, lots more playing and printing, and I'll be showing you that in future content. So please do stay safe and I'll speak to you soon.